Episode of the Remnant Call. Glad to have you here. Well, we are on the verge of war, potentially between Russia and Ukraine. We have now transgender wanting to be the governor of California, Caitlyn Jenner, which is actually Bruce Jenner. That is a man, not a woman. I don't care how many hormones you take. Now we have the president of the United States trying to influence verdicts in court decisions. And folks, it is just beginning. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for everything that is going on, Lord, right now in the world, because it's a reminder to us we need Need to be ready. Lord, there are many who have been called. There are many who have been assigned, Lord, and it is time for us to begin to fulfill those duties of the mission that you have called us to, Lord, and that's to preach this ever-loving gospel, everlasting gospel to every creature that is on this earth, Lord. It is time for us to rise up as your army, your remnant army, Lord. We don't war with guns, Lord. We war in the spirit on our knees. And so, Lord, I pray that you will guide us and strengthen us, Lord, that we will be ready to fight in the spirit, Lord, in this last hour. We thank you so much, Father in heaven, for the blessings that you give us, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, we have come to a major tipping point in the United States. We are now on the other side of the evil that is be, that slowly began to take over, starting back in FDR, really taking off in the 60s, and now is prevalent and is in your face, communist socialism, uh, debauchery, absolute abominations that are being committed in the United States of America. And if God help you, if you're white in this last hour right now, because you are now the enemy of everything that is good in their eyes, if you are happen to be white. And folks, I'm telling you right now, my best friends, black, Hispanic, and we have decided, we separated ourselves from this a long time ago, but I'm telling you right now, They want us to war. They want a civil war. And this civil war, it is coming. The civil war is coming to the United States. It will be here, and it is going to be violent. And that is exactly what they want. And when it gets to that point, our enemies shall strike against us. It's coming. The red horse is beginning to ride. We see the things happening all over the world. We are in such utter chaos and delusion right now in the United States that a you know Maxine Waters can go out there and now say call for violence and then come around and say she's peaceful she's not calling for violence this is about uh, what happened with Donald Trump he's the one responsible for it and they let it pass that nothing happens and it is a mind head trick head fake on the public the uh, people of the United States of America and people are going to get angry. That's what they want you to do. They want you to rise up and be angry with the hypocrisy. Or you will be on the other crowd where you would just believe everything they tell you that it is somehow correct and right. And do you see how dangerous of a moment we are living in right now? It is so radical at this point in time. Everything is so out of control, wanting to make now D.C. a state and then Puerto Rico a state, now letting our borders be completely trampled. And then finally, our vice president of the United States finally takes some action on the border and says that she's there to fight it because it's all due to climate change. These are climate-worshipping, devil-worshipping, absolute vile Satanists that are running this country, and it's disgusting. It's despicable, and we better separate ourselves from this evil that is going on. Folks, I'm here to tell you it is going to continue to get worse. If you haven't been keeping up with that Pastor James Coates up there in the Grace Life Church, well, after he got released from prison, do you know what they did? They started to meet again. The Up there in Alberta, they fenced off his church. 
Oh, yes, they fenced off their church so they couldn't go to church up there. It is out of control. Now he is going to court. He asked them to provide scientific evidence of the coronavirus and that they were spreading uh, in court there. And up there, they have voted now that they do not have to uh, present scientific evidence uh, that they are spreading coronavirus and all these things in their gatherings. It's out of control. The madness does not end. Folks, I don't even know where to end with the absolute chaos. There are so many things that has happened in one week in the United States of America. It is literally out of control. And this Green New Deal, this climate change, it is about worshiping Mother Earth. And I'm sorry, I listen, God calls us to be good stewards of the earth. Don't get me wrong. I believe that those who des- God will destroy those who destroy the earth. It is a good thing to be a good steward. But these people worship the earth. And last time I checked, it's not Mother Earth. It's Father God. Yes, our Heavenly Father is a male. He is the male of all males. He is the ultimate male. He is not some female Mother Earth out there. And folks, we better get this right, especially in this hour we are moving forward, because the confusion is coming. And besides, all on top of this, now they're prepping us for this alien invasion that's coming. Oh, yes, they're prepping us to accept aliens in the United States. They are. It's in the news. It's all over the place. They want us to believe this demonic, satanic invasion of a false messiah that's going to come. I'm not sure all the details that are going to come, but there is strong delusion that's going to be so uh, utterly delusional that if it was possible, even the very elect of God could be deceived. That's what the Bible says. Folks, we cannot put this to chance right now. We must get firm in our faith. We must begin to invest our talents. And I want to talk, just mention that briefly. I want to mention this very briefly because we better think about this. God is very specific when he talks about our talents and how we are to use them in the word of God. And he talks about men who had five talents, two talents, all the way down to one talent. And the interesting thing was, it didn't matter how many talents you had. What mattered was that you invested those talents to multiply those talents. Even the man finally, though, that decided not to invest his talent, but to bury in the earth, he only had one, but he decided he was going to bury his talent and do nothing with it. And you know what? God had him cast out out into the place where there'd be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And he only had one talent. Now, God would have been happy with that one talent if he would have just used it wildly and invested it into his kingdom. But he didn't do that. It's not about how many talents you have, how many gifts God has given you. It's about what have you done with the one gift God has given you? Have you done anything with it? Have you? Because, because I, folks, I say this all the time. What are you doing for the kingdom? What are you doing to make a difference? And some people say, well, I, I, can, I, I can't, Brother Frank, I'm, I, I can't go out. I'm too old. Well, maybe you are. And I'm not saying that there aren't some people who can't go out. But everybody, even the oldest, can still pray. And pray for those who are on the front lines. And I want to talk tonight just a little bit about this, but I want to open up with a verse that for me, I've mentioned several times through the years, and I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to keep hitting this verse over and over again, because you've got to let this sink in to your head. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There's a way that seems right. But the end of that way, it's not right. It leads to death. What the Bible is saying, it is possible that you can be so convinced you're on the right way, the only to find out in the end you're actually going the wrong direction. And I mention that as a warning to people for a specific reason. Because I have people who like to email me and chastise me. I find that those who criticize others the most are the ones who never do anything themselves. Let me give you an example. 
I have heard people in churches say, we need to do this. We need to do that. We need to do whatever. And okay, so we're like, all right, let's do something. So my wife and I were involved heavily in homeless ministries because of my years of drug addiction and everything. It's, it's something that's personal, important to our family. And, and we'll get down there, and, and I've got a few core friends that come. But I want to talk one th- about my brother, Gene. He's a great man, a, a Haiti. And he's got one leg. He's from Haiti. He's got one leg. Now, this brother is amazing. You know why he's amazing? Because he comes and helps, sleeps over, stays with me at the shelter overnight, helps make food, helps clean up. He's got one leg, yet I can't get two-legged people to do a single thing. I can't get those who speak and bark the loudest to do anything. And I find so often those who are so critical do nothing in life. I'll give you another example. I, if you find somebody that all they do in life is just put down another person and other people, and every time they find something going on with some wrong with someone else, I'll guarantee you that person is covering up the sin that is going on in their own life. Folks, if you only talk and never do, your words are so empty. They mean nothing. Faith without works is dead. It's not that works save you, but if you have faith, you will do works. It's a natural reaction. Faith is like a boat going down the river. Your works is the wake that follows the boat. It happens. Works are nothing but the outward expression of the inward walk. And if you think that all you got to do is sit there and criticize or be worried or talk about, but never actually get out and do anything, you have deceived yourself. And I'm sick of people that simply sit there and talk and chastise and never actually do anything for the kingdom. It's an embarrassment. It's a joke. And yet they'll call themselves Christians and talk about praise Jesus, yet never lift a finger to help somebody else. You know, folks, sometimes we are so judgmental. We get out there and listen, I work with the homeless. I know there are people that are out there scamming the system. I know there are people that are out there that could work that don't. But you know what? There are those out there that have mental handicap problems that literally can't. And there are those out there that are simply just on bad times. But because the actions of few, we judge so many else, and we wouldn't dare stop and help somebody because they'll probably use it for wrong. You know what I always say? The first time, help somebody, don't ask any questions. If then they come back and it's a pattern and you know they're doing wrong, that's a different story. But start giving people the benefit of the doubt before we bring the holy hands of judgment down on somebody. It's amazing the lack of what people are doing. And the reason we're in the position we are right now in the United States is because the church has done nothing. God's people remain silent. Thank the Lord for Pastor Coates, who had the guts to stand up and decide that he, his God's word was more valuable than his government. You see, as Pastor Coates said, he didn't go to prison for disobeying the law. He went to prison for simply serving Christ. And that is so true in this hour. The spinelessness amongst God's people is, I don't know what's happened. This used to be a country of warriors. Warriors in the Lord. The United States, we we sent missionaries out to the world into hostile places. Do you know now the world sends missionaries to us because we've lost our ways and this madness is going on and there are churches that are embracing it. This woke culture of ridiculous because everybody's got an excuse of why they can't go out and do something. I can't do it because of this. I can't do it because of that. And it reminds me of that story in the Bible in Luke chapter 14. If you want to turn there with me, Luke chapter 14. It's a wonderful story. Jesus is sitting there trying to share with people, saying, hey, listen, you know what? When when you're having a meal, don't just, don't buy, invite your friends. You do that all the time. Why don't, he says, why don't you do this? Don't invite them. Invite somebody else. Invite the poor. 
Somebody who can't pay you back because you like to have your friends over because you know that in return they'll have you over. And you can get something for them because you know that they'll get something for you back. But he says, why don't you do this? Don't invite your rich neighbor. Don't invite your near kinsmen or your brethren. Why don't you invite over the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind? And thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense. Meaning, he says, why don't you help somebody who can't return the favor? Why don't you help somebody that can't do anything in return? For thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And Jesus decides to take an opportunity to share a lesson with these people. Starting in verse 16, it says, Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and, and therefore I cannot come. You see, these people were filled full of excuses. This was an invitation into the kingdom, but they were too busy to partake. They all had something to do that was causing them to go and be interested in other things. You see, if, if, if you've ever been involved in a church before, and many of you have not, but, but there's a simple rule in churches. It, it's always called the 80-20 rule, Right? 20% of the people, or the 20, 80, 80, 20, 20% of the people do 80% of the work. Actually, it's more like 10% of the people do 95% of the work. That's really how it works. I'll tell you what's the worst thing in the world in a church is trying to get people who will do something. Trying to get people who will actually volunteer to do something. It is the worst thing ever. You can't get people to do anything because they all have good excuses of why they're too busy to do anything for the Lord. I'll tell you what, folks, he'll make some time for us, but don't make him do that. Why don't we find some time for God? We are living in such an unparalleled time in the United States history. Listen, they had it tough back when they first came to this country. They had it tough uh, during the 17 and 1800s at times. There were some tough, hard times. But there was an overall belief in God, and it was accepted in the society. But now we are living in a time where truth is no more. Truth is out the window. It's unparalleled in history. That, that the people can get away with saying and doing the things and the vile, filthy wickedness of what's going on right now and be called good? We're on the verge of war. We're on the verge of civil war. We're on the verge of all these things, and yet we're talking about climate change is what's causing the border crisis? Give me a break. What is wrong with our people in the society today? What is wrong that you would want to teach children that that uh, having uh, relationships with the same gender is somehow okay, or having relationships at all that are only saved for marriage would be okay for children? It's somehow all right? And that pedophilia is not nothing wicked. It's just a different persuasion. That's what they're trying to tell people today. It is so disgusting. Because the church is full of excuses. It's like the Republican Party. They're a joke. They can't stand up and fight against anything. Where are they? They're nowhere. 
They're just as much as a joke as anybody else because they do nothing. They allow the Democrats to run over this country with all the perverse evil, and they end up becoming just as much a part of the vileness that's going on because they sit around and talk, many of them, with no action. And the few who do, well, they get put in their place real quick. But you know the interesting thing about that story? There's another person in that story that never gets talked about much. The real hero of the story. Now, besides God, obviously, he's the hero. But there's another person in there that's so often overlooked. Verse 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto his servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come, that the house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper." So the servant, the follower, the remnant of God, the ones that believe that Jesus' purpose is above their own purpose and that God's ways are higher and more valuable than the things on this earth, he goes out there and he finds, he does what his master says, and he comes back and says, Lord, there's still more room. God says, go and find more. Find more. You see, we, folks, I cannot stress this enough. Listen, do I believe there should you should prepare for these last days? You should put some food away and some things. Absolutely, you put food away every week when you go to the grocery store. Get a few extra cans. It's a good thing to have. Will it save you? Absolutely not. Will it deliver you to the end? Absolutely not. But having prepared is a good thing. But the truth is that if we neglect the most important thing, our prayer time, seeking God, reading his word. But above, uh, after that, there is something even more, well, not more important, but after that is the most important thing is that we must share the good news that Jesus is coming and we have to tell people about it. I, I can't stress this enough through the remnant call. I want you to get one thing, that simply calling yourself and being a believer and, and doing nothing is worthless. It's worthless. Because action, words need to be backed with action. And that action is simple. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody about the love of our Heavenly Father and that there's a plan of salvation and that he can save their lives. That is what this world is about. Will they mock you? Yes. Will they say bad things about you? Yes. Noah preached for 120 years. They they did all that stuff. He was a preacher of righteousness. Don't be discouraged because people won't listen. Keep sharing because I'm going to tell you what. You might not see the fruit of that preaching or that sharing, but you may plant a seed. Somebody else comes along and waters it, and then God gives the increase. And you get to the kingdom And you find out one day that those who you had no idea were there because of you. Sometimes it's just that first ice-breaking word that even though they don't want to hear it, it sits in their crawl and they can't get rid of it no matter how bad they try. And then they hear something somewhere else and it begins to grow. Instead of sitting there and saying, nobody hears and complaining. No, but listen, Jeremiah was told at the beginning of his ministry that he was going to be sharing some stuff, but nobody would be listening. That what a horrible way to start your ministry out, but that's what God told him. He's going to share these things and tell people, but no one was going to listen to him. And when they finally came and told Jeremiah that they were going to listen, he went out and got a great word of the Lord, came back and told him what to do and told him, don't go down to Egypt and all that stuff. And then they turned around and called him a false person prophet. That was Jeremiah's life. But what was the result of his life? I'll tell you what. 2,500 years later, roughly, we're still sharing the power of that book. And you know how many people have been brought to Christ because of the words in Jeremiah and other places in God's word and the instructions and the benefits of that weeping prophet who cared more about the things of God than he did about the things of this world? That's the God that we serve. 
Folks, we are here. We are at a very, uh, this is the crossroads, and you need to make a decision which way you're going to go. God is calling us to action. It's time to rise up. You can sit by and keep doing what you're doing, or you can get out and do something. But for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. This is Brother Frank on the Remnant Call saying to everybody, good night, shalom, and get busy. Trumpet in Zion